Oh, there's my light. Hey. Um, what I want to say is um, in reference to the group of planets that are gathering in Leo and of course always sidereal never tropical you don't have to believe sidereal you don't have to use sidereal you don't have to like your sidereal birth chart you don't have to understand anything about anything having to do with astrology I just want you to listen and I want you to hear me and I want you to share this and I want you to talk about this with your people I want you to really think deeply about what I am about to say You've heard me frequently say, if you follow me on Twitter, I write it all the time, I say it all the time in videos, um, but you've heard me say that identity is a belief system. And this is important because your belief system is being weaponized against you. I'm gonna say that whole thing again, identity is a belief system and your belief system is being weaponized against you now i'm going to break that down so that there's no confusion you know me words mean things and i never want to leave things up to interpretation i want to be very clear about what i'm saying so that there's no confusion no misinterpretation etc what is identity this is not about authenticity um this is not about um, being real. This is not about, um, you know, I don't need their validation. You know, I don't need their approval. I love me. This is not about any of those things. I don't really care how you feel about yourself, to be honest. Um, when I say identity, I am talking about the story that it's, it's like on loop in your conscious and subconscious mind about who you are and that story is the way that you have interpreted not only things that have happened to you but everything out in the world so when I say that identity is a belief system what I'm saying is that the story that you believe and tell about who you are and the world is up for interpretation. Now, when I say that your belief system is being weaponized against you, this is going to get a little bit deep and I hope you all can hear me and I hope I can find the words to really properly articulate this. When we are unclear or willfully lying to ourselves and everyone else about who we are, it opens the door for manipulation because you get so caught up in convincing yourself and other people about who you are that it becomes a chink in your armor now I'm going to be very direct here when your identity only exists in reference to somebody else that's when your belief system is very very easily and frequently weaponized against you I'm talking about whiteness I'm talking about maleness I'm talking about class access to money and wealth and influential people see I tweeted this the other day and it's from something I wrote back in December or November of 2018 but it said the the promise of dominion over someone else the cost for that is loss of dominion over yourself so this goes back to when your identity exists only in relationship to somebody else right when your identity is rooted in maintaining 
a system of power, you have completely abdicated and given up the authority to define yourself. So when I say that your identity is a belief system and your belief system is being weaponized against you, I mean that. I mean that you are so determined to maintain proximity to power, to identify with authority that you are willing to give up power and authority over yourself. Submission is when you yield your own perceptions and your judgment. And perceptions means just how you see something, the act of seeing something with your eyes or your mind and your judgment is the story that you tell about that perception. When you submit, submission means that you are yielding your perceptions and your judgment to somebody else's perceptions and judgments. So now you never ever see things measured against your own organically developed value system and morals. Your perceptions are automatically seen through the lens of the story that somebody else wants to tell about who they are. Yes, this will be on YouTube. So I'm going to keep repeating this. Identity is a belief system and your belief system is being weaponized against you. When you are unwilling to do the work to unpack and dig out that stuff that keeps you from living the life that you want to have. And I don't mean money. I don't mean houses. I don't mean career. I don't mean any of those material things. I mean having relationships that allow you to thrive. When you're unwilling to unpack those things that keep you from thriving in relationship and community, it becomes a weapon against you. Because again, now all of your energy and your focus and your drive gets is used to maintain that story. I mean, this is the definition of narcissism. The nar narcissist have an image of themselves that is impervious to reason and logic because should they lose that image, it feels like death. And so they use every single thing that they say and do is meant to uphold that image. It is exhausting to have to constantly monitor other people's perceptions of you to the point that where, where are you like in all of that? Like, where are you? It's like being possessed. So another phrase that I wanna add in here is lack of knowledge of self is going to kill us all. Lack of knowledge of self is going to kill us all. All of you who went and posted that picture and you believed that if you posted this picture with a bunch of words that it was gonna avoid a contract with Instagram, I'm talking to you. All of you who retweet stories without reading them because the headline seems to align with the story you believe about who you are and how the world works. I'm talking to you. Those of you who are unwilling to put any skin in the game to save your own life, I'm talking to you. You remember, maybe you don't know, but if you don't, you should watch The Great American Hack because this is the most important part of it. Cambridge Analytica used psychology tests to gather information about American citizens 
to create a psychological profile so that they can more directly target you with ad campaign messaging. Your lack of knowledge of self will kill us all. You want some test to tell you who you are, to confirm your story of your identity. You want some test to tell you, see, and I'm just about to really hurt a lot of people's feelings, but I don't really care because my life house is loaded up right now and my Jupiter is getting all these trines from Leo. And so it's just preaching time. But I'm gonna say this, you love tropical astrology because it gives you a nice little container of identity to fit into. Because when you look at your sidereal chart, you say, oh, that's not me because you hate cancers, because your mom is a cancer and you don't like her, you never got along. Like, this is just really stupid. This is really dumb, okay? My whole point in this is that Systems of power know who you are better than you know who you are. <laughs> and that's why you're out here tweeting photos, thinking that that's going to void the terms of use that you signed up for by posting on Instagram and creating accounts. <laughs> like, I don't even want to call you stupid. I just want to call it ignorance. Ignorance is lack of knowledge of self. So let's go back real quick. Identity is, is, is a belief system. A belief system is rooted in myths that, that show you or teach you or serve as a model against which you measure everything, right? So I'm gonna give you an example. You're in a relationship, you're in a friendship or whatever it may be, um, whether this is with a work relationship, romantic, whatever it may be, and something happens, there's an altercation, right? And the altercation, it, what it's about is moot, right? But what happens is you go get on your text message and your phone and you're telling your girlfriends and your mama and everybody about this altercation. And the facts of the altercation are of no consequence because what you are doing, what you're defending in an altercation is your identity, right? So this identity, this story, you're not gonna let this altercation uh, 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 change your narrative of self and your perception of who you are. So every time you tell this story, you change the facts and your interpretation of it just a little bit so that by the time you get to a few days later, that story and that altercation now is about how they got you all messed up, right? What that means is they must not know who I am because this is who I am, right? So we get into these things of defending identities, right? Rather than actually solving problems. This is why identity is a belief system and your belief system is being weaponized against you, right? The, the psychology of self-defense tells us that we can either take experiences that challenge our identity, our narrative of self, our personal myth, and we can integrate them and use them as opportunities to integrate the parts of ourselves that we don't like and we think are ugly. Or we can shore up our defenses and, you know, uh, uh, put a wall around us and be impervious to the possibility that everything we believe we are not is actually inside of us. Your identity and your belief system is being weaponized against you. This is, I'm saying these things because I am watching so loud I'm saying these things because I am watching all of all of this stuff come up that is directly connected and related to August and September of 2017 I just had a moment this morning where I remembered the young woman who was killed in Charlottesville and how seeing unchecked power and emboldened uh, 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 narcissism 
um, and uh, public displays of hostility and antagonism against black people and women and Jewish people and Latinas and anybody who's not white and male and rich, right, has emboldened people to be violent and hostile in environments where they probably would have just chilled out because they know that the consequences, somebody's gonna beat your ass, right? So I experienced this yesterday. I'm in this room full of white people and I was already feeling uncomfortable because that was the second time yesterday that I had found myself in a place where I was the only black person, right? And this woman, my kid is on the floor playing with his iPad and this woman tells me, um, you know, after I'd asked my son to move to give this woman a little bit of, you know, he's in her personal space or whatever, um, I say, you know, come back a little bit closer to this row so that if this woman wants to get up, you won't be in the way. And this woman turns to me with a straight face and says, that's all right, I'll kick him. This white woman told me that if my son was in the way when she wanted to get up, that she would kick him. Your identity is a belief system and your belief system is being weaponized against you the point is that your politics are an extension of your identity your who you vote for right who you support what you're quiet about what you're loud about it don't have nothing to do with anything out there it's all about you. You vote for who you vote for because that person makes you feel good about what you believe about yourself. If you think that white people are inherently better than black people, than Latinas, if you think straight people are inherently better than any other, if you think maleness is better than any other, that's a part of your identity. And see, people like to put it on, well, I'm just a Republican. I'm just a Christian. I'm just a this, insert this. That's when you give up your perceptions and judgments and abdicate the responsibility to make your own moral judgments. So I don't wanna fucking hear about your religion. I don't wanna hear about your political party because what I know is that your belief system is being weaponized against you. You're gonna kill yourself. Look at all of those people in Trump country being flooded out, having no crops late planting season voting for people who are climate change deniers why because they are more afraid of embracing their fallibility they would rather give up their life and livelihood they would rather sacrifice their physical body life and well-being just for the sake of maintaining an identity and so those people are not here on my Instagram today but they're your family members to my white followers they're your co-workers to my white followers they're your family members to my biracial followers those people are not here to hear this today but for those of you that are here to hear this today, I'm gonna make it real plain for you. Everything that you think that you're not is being weaponized against you. This moment, especially right now, and as we get to the end of this year at this eclipse that sets off some things that I'll have to just talk about at another time, this moment is about telling yourself the truth about who you are. If we are going to survive this, if humanity is going to survive climate change, I 
had a moment a couple weeks ago where I had this vision of earth being uninhabitable in my lifetime. I'm 35. I was born in 1984. I should be just at the early mid part of my life, right? If we are going to survive climate change, climate change induced disaster. And when I say we, I don't mean me, I mean humanity. The earth will save itself. So this is not about saving the earth. The earth will kill us all to bring it back to equilibrium. It's done it before. So if we're going to save ourselves, it is imperative that we embrace the work of radical honesty. Radical honesty means you tell yourself the truth about who you are and you allow the other people in your life to bear witness to that. Telling the truth about who you are looks like kids getting out of school. Telling the truth about who you are looks like pausing in that moment when you are ready to demonize and blame someone else and see that moment as an opportunity to embrace your projection. Projection is not bad. It is the nature of, hu of the human psyche. Projection means I bear witness to myself through my interactions with other people in the world around me. Projection becomes a problem when you really truly believe that it's not you, that it's really the other person, that it's really them out there, they're wrong, they're bad, right? Projection is one of those things that is weaponized against us when we're talking about identity, right? When we're talking about the belief system of identity because projection literally says, I'm watching this thing happen between me and you, but I'm good on recognizing that this interaction is telling me something about myself. I don't wanna hear anything that doesn't reinforce my belief about who I am. I don't want to see anything that doesn't reinforce my belief about who I am. I don't want to read nothing. I don't want to talk about it. Don't tell me. I don't care. That's going to be the death of us. So this work starts before voting. This work starts before green economic policy. This work says I am willing to tell the truth about who I am, because that's what opens up receptiveness to the truth about what you need to do in this world. Because if your identity is caught up in, you know, this story that won't allow for you to fully embrace your privilege, I don't care if you're black. I don't even care if you're working check to check. I don't really care what your plight is, to be honest. Because at the end of the day, we're all gonna burn up in the same climate change hellhole. And so we must all face our fear of death. We must all embrace and bring into consciousness our survival instinct. And what I mean by that is to understand that our survival instinct is not just about preserving our physical body, it's also about preserving an identity. We have a, a survival instinct that wants to maintain a cohesive narrative about who we are. And so we look to our leaders to reinforce our personal narrative about who we are. And that's normal, that's normal. We want something out there to make us feel good and tell us, yes, that's who you are. You're a great person. You so woke, you so conscious, look at you. You read all the books, look at your PhD, look at your college degree, look at your street hustler mentality. Look at you, you doing it, you so smart. You're intelligent, who cares, right? Because at the end of the day, this is all just about, this is who I am and this is who I believe I am 
And so I need my world to look like that. That's Leo. That's Leo. That's Leo. This is not about fucking hair and vanity and creativity and being on stage and flattery. That's some useless astrology that ain't gonna save nobody's life. So this is about our lives being on the line. I'm gonna wrap this up because I could talk about this all day. But I want you to see this moment as we're getting closer to this new moon in Leo on August 30th, that the new moon in Leo, sun, moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars will all be in Leo, square Jupiter and Scorpio, trine Saturn and Sagittarius. I really want you to think very, very deeply and I just observe the ways in which you defer to authority because that authority reinforces your belief about who you are. I want you to think very deeply about the belief systems, the political ideology. I want you to think very deeply about how you are interpreting the things that are happening to you and with you in your personal relationships because I want you to see and just, just bring it into your awareness that every interaction, every news story you read, every conviction that rises up in you, this is not about morality. This is about who you believe you are and what you believe you're capable of. This is about your personal myth, your identity that you want to see right i started to write in my weekly forecast the phrase representation matters and it does but it's a dangerous game to play looking for images of yourself in the world around you when you are incapable of being honest about who you really are it is a dangerous game for you to expect your partners and relations to reflect back to you the story you believe about who you are when you're not willing to be honest about who you are. Real intimacy and love only happens in that context. Real belonging and community and thriving only happens in the context of I'm willing to embrace and shed light on everything that is revealed to me about who I am within reason. So how you feel about people, and this is barring people who have done you real harm, right? At that point, this is not about, you know, that. At that point, it's about save your body first, save your life first, and physical boundaries. But once you do the physical boundaries, you got to do the psychological boundaries. And the psychological boundaries are questioning your own identity questioning how you've interpreted your experiences and the things that have happened to you in your life questioning how you demonize or make moral judgments about people and how those moral judgments have more to do with preserving who you think you are these are not easy things they're very 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 difficult things but they are truly one of the major cornerstones of my work with the people's oracle I call it divination for liberation because this is about emotional and spiritual liberation that leads to political liberation. Any movement is torn apart. Every movement, every country, every nation, every political and economic system fails when the people who are in it refuse to tell the truth about who they are. I'm gonna leave you with that. Every political system, every nation, every religion, every way in which human organize themselves and their resources fails when the people in it refuse to tell the truth about who they are. That's the story of Rome. Rome fell because it was so important for them to maintain the identity of powerfulness. And so the same thing is happening here. That America 
and the people in it are so wrapped up in telling the story of democracy, the myth of democracy, the myth of capitalism, the myth of privilege and American uh, 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 manifest destiny. America is so deeply invested in the identity of no human in the history of Earth has ever had it better than us. When you think your shit doesn't stink, your shit kills you. Because your shit just ends up all around you, giving off toxins, attracting viruses and disease. But because you think your shit doesn't stink, oh, it's fine. I can just put it in that little corner. Every system eventually falls because the people in it won't tell the truth about who they are. So I want you to see your personal work. I want you to see your work in your most personal relationships, your battle with your mental and emotional health, your spiritual journey, your personal practice of prayer, of meditation, work with your dreams and your tarot cards personally in your personal life, I want you to see that as the first step to our collective liberation. So I don't want you to read your cards about, well, you're gonna do that anyway, cause I do it too. You know, you're gonna read your cards about your job and when you're gonna get your money and when you're gonna meet your boo and all of that stuff. But I want you to, I want you to hear in your cards, your tarot, your dreams. I want you to hear the truth about who you are. I want you to look for and make room for an interpretation that reveals more of you to yourself. I think that's all I have to say. I think that's it. I will put this on YouTube for those of you who are tuning in late or don't have time to view this before it expires. But, um, yeah, I'll have more to say about this over the coming weeks because it feels very dire and urgent to me. So you all really have a very happy Wednesday. Um, please don't pray for the Amazon. Pray for yourself. Pray that your heart will be convicted to take steps toward the righteous action that's revealed to you. Do not pray for the people who are detained in concentration camps. Pray that your dreams will reveal to you the truth about who you are and the work you need to do to be effective in this world. Do not pray for those incarcerated or the families of victims of gun violence. Pray that you will find the courage to tell the truth. Pray that your heart will be convicted to recognize that a loss of a family member and that relationship is nothing compared to the death of humanity. You won't even have nowhere to be in relation with those family members should a flood come, should the fire rain down. And these aren't apocalyptic messages to induce fear. 9,000 people, I just want you to think about that. 9,000 people is like the population of an entire small university the little suburb right outside your city, that's the entire town. Two or three of them, maybe. 9,000 people 
have been evacuated from an island because of fire. So this is not to induce fear. This is just the truth. Whole entire towns were underwater and made into islands in the middle of the United States because of climate change induced rain and flooding because politicians will not fix the infrastructure because politicians would rather build walls and drill oil than make sure that you and your family and my family have food in a way that sustains this world for generations to come. But that's a, another sermon for another time. You all enjoy your Wednesday and I will talk to you later.